Thank you for joining us and welcome to episode number three of this series. My name is Benjamin Brain. I'll be your host for the next 60 minutes or so. And this is the truth about business. Today we speak to Yvonne Gorman, owner of Essential Print Services in Derby and what turned out to be another fantastic interview with another brilliant real life business champion. Now Yvonne is so much more than a local business owner. In fact, by the time we got to the end of the interview, I'd seriously started to consider whether she stumbled across some sort of time machine because as I'm sure you'll agree, what she's managed to achieve in such a relatively short space of time is mind blowing. So as well as being a devoted and passionate business owner at Essential Print with the rest of the Print Angels, Yvonne is a UK small business champion. She's been invited to Downing Street not once but twice in recognition of her entrepreneurship. She's a non-exec board member of Marketing Derby. She regularly features in the Derby Telegraph Inspirational 250. She's been featured on Forbes.co.uk. She's the founder of the Derby Hub. And in 2019, Yvonne has made the shortlist in the UK Great British Entrepreneur of the Year Awards, which is an outstanding achievement up against some seriously tough competition. So without further ado, let's get into this brilliant business interview with a great Derby entrepreneur and owner of Essential Print Services, Yvonne Gorman. Yvonne, welcome to The Truth About Business. Hi, Ben. Thank you for taking some time out to share your experiences. My pleasure. So we're going to get straight into it. You and the team at Essential Print describe yourselves as print evangelists. Can you give us a bit more of an insight into what a print evangelist is? Well, that tag stuck with me well before Essential Print Services was born. It was something that sort of carried me and followed me around my career. It was um, trying to find a quirky job title and I worked for somebody else. And the word evangelist sort of described my enthusiasm for all things creative and printing. So that's, that's where it's come from. Nothing more, nothing less than that. Okay. So we know about your role from the introduction at Essential Print and looking back through your career, looking back through LinkedIn and the various titles that you've had, they've always included in one way or another marketing or design. So has that always been a passion of yours? Well, when I left school, um, I didn't have any clue of what I wanted to do. Literally no idea whatsoever. I knew that I loved creative writing. I was good at English. I loved stationery and I'm a very, very organised person. So I left school looking for an admin job, office admin. Um, and it just so happened that I went to work for a PR agency as a PR apprentice, writing press releases for Derby Telegraph and local clients, um, going down to the Telegraph that used to be on Meadow Lane, Meadow Road, um, with the hard copy photographs in my one litre Nova and with a floppy disk for the editor. So it just, I've sort of stumbled across the industry and it's fit me very well because my passion is all about helping people, helping businesses shout about themselves because as a small business, no one else is going to do it for you. You know, mm. you haven't got a marketing team. So telling people that it is okay to shout about yourself and, and, and bang the drum about the good stuff that you're doing and how you help your customers. Um, and it's okay to blow your own trumpet. And I absolutely love learning and in this industry, you're learning all the time because technology changes, techniques changes, uh, people change. And yeah, it's absolutely fascinating. I love it. It's a chance for me to, you know, my creative outlet is well and truly used. Yeah, you can tell you've got yeah. a real passion for it. So going back to those early days then of when you were apprentice at The Telegraph, back then, did you ever think that one day you'd be owner of your own company? Absolutely not at all. I mean, Technically, I didn't work for the Telegraph. It was for a PR agency who submitted lots of press releases for the Telegraph at the time. So um, looking at the Business Weekly, which is now unfortunately no longer, every Wednesday in the Telegraph was a real buzz for me, like which piece of my work is going to be featured. So that was really cool. Um, but owning my own business was never, ever on the cards growing up. I never thought I was capable of it. Um, I was brought up to think you leave school, you get yourself a job, get some cash. And if you enjoy what you're doing, it's just a bonus. So college was not encouraged, university was not encouraged. If I'd chosen that route, I would have been supported, but it was almost like, well, leave school, get a job. That was it. Okay. That, was, that was as far as my aspirations 
um, went to. Okay, and so how did you get into the PR agency then? Was there a sort of anywhere in your mind that that was a direction that you wanted to go or was it by chance? I'm a firm believer of things do happen for a reason and I'd been for several, loads of interviews um, for admin assistant, just office admin work, basic stuff. And I saw this advert in the job centre for a PR assistant. And I'll be honest, I had no idea what that meant. I just saw it was writing creatively. It was in an office. It was in town. It fit the bill. So I went along, uh, had the interview. And it's for, uh, at the time it was on Bridge Street in Derby, but the company, BHPR, is just around the corner on Pride Park here. It's still going today. I'm still in contact with my first boss. And really, if I hadn't had that first job, I honestly wouldn't know where I'd be today. At the time, I was in the wrong crowd as well. And seeing what the managing director, Donna Hill, was achieving for herself as a female entrepreneur, and I didn't have very much female influence in my life at the time, she was a real influence on me. You know, she could, she'd show me that as a single female, you can be independent and look after yourself and do well. And I thought, crikey, this is, this is a the good life. This is a better life. And that's what I pursued thereafter. Okay. Wow. Okay. So having that role model in your life, do you feel that's an important part for not just women, but for people starting out in the world of work everywhere? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I think if you, if you can, looking back, I suppose she was a mentor. I didn't realize it at the time, how important she was to me. But looking back, I think, crikey, if I'd gone for that insurance broker job, if I'd gone for that, I went, even went for a job at um, the local disability um, company where they sell wheelchairs for old people. I remember the interview, the guy interviewed me saying, if you work here, Yvonne, you're going to have a job for life. And I thought, no, thanks. That doesn't tick my box at all. But, you know, seeing... Donna and what she had achieved and what she was doing and how she was working with small businesses and her work having a direct and positive impact on other businesses and other people's lives. I thought, yeah, that's that's good. I want some of that. Yeah. OK. And so I think there's a lot of people that are in the environment where there is somebody that they can look up to and that motivates them to succeed. And what do you think the difference is between somebody like yourself who soaks that in and uses it to their own advantage and the people that perhaps turn the other way and, and don't take full advantage of those lessons and experiences and teachings that the mentors have to offer? Well, from that experience and having other people that I've looked to, up to along the way, I've made sure that my door is always open. Um, I don't like to burn my bridges. So even with members of staff that have left, you know, the door is always open if you need help. And I'm, I'm currently um, helping one of my ex-members of staff now to build her own freelance design business um not nothing formally but i'm always looking out for things that she can get involved with things that she can attend i've seen this article have a read of this you know i think it's important um to make sure your door is always open to people who might need your help and also to be brave enough to accept help that's offered to you mm. if you if you see someone that you think crikey they're really good i really like what they're doing i don't think there's anything wrong with contacting them and saying look can I just spend a couple of hours with you picking your brains and you'll be surprised the number of people who are so willing to help you and have a coffee with you and share those experiences even in the same industry yeah if you don't ask you don't Absolutely, get the message yeah. then and I suppose okay so the podcast we're on is the truth about business and something <laughs> that I like to talk about and I hope other people like to listen to is those early days of when you first started your own business and the feelings that you went through the emotions the struggles Gosh. the trials so going back to those very, very early days before the launch of Essential Print, was there a turning point that happened where you just realised that, right, this is me now, I need to set up on my own, I need to be my own boss? Well, like I said, I had no aspiration whatsoever in running my own business. It was never on the cars. My family don't run their own businesses at the time. None of my close friends did. So it was something that I'd be the first at doing. And that was really scary in itself. And in the probably couple of years running up to starting the business in April 2011, so many people were saying to me, you could do this yourself, you'd be really good at it. And I thought, no, don't be daft, absolutely not, don't be crazy. Um, the thought of it just, you know, gave me the heebie-jeebies. 
no, pro no, no confidence whatsoever in doing it myself and no, no desire to. Whoever I've worked for, I've always taken it upon myself to almost work for that business as, the, as if it was my own anyway, to take the full responsibility for um, getting the sales in, looking after customers, making sure they're happy, seeing the whole process through from start to finish anyway. So I almost felt like I was doing it, but for somebody else, but having that security blanket of having my wage every month. Um, so when the volume of people saying, you really need to do this yourself, increase, I thought, crikey, that so many people are telling me this, I can't ignore it anymore. And I had, I sort of planted the seed in my own head I thought, oh, just toying with the idea. And I was working for a business that had a Derby office on Pride Park. And it was a husband and wife team. And the communications with them had broken down for a few months, but I was still running things successfully for them on their behalf. And I was a director with their business with a view of buying them out over a number of years as an extra strategy. And that was my, almost, I think, I was sort of playing at it. I was a director, so I felt important with a view to buying them out in a few years' time. So I still had time to get out almost if I didn't like it. And I said to them one day, look, the communications between us guys have broken down. It's really getting me down in the dumps. It's, um, it's affecting my work and the way I'm feeling. So we need to call it a day. And I can give you, you know, three months notice, six months notice. It has long as, however long you need to make the transition as easy as possible for both of us. But it's time to you know, start stepping away. And out of the blue, they said, well, you can go now if you like. I was like, you what? <laughs> um, but, but what about the uh, plan of buying you out? And what about the contract? And at the time, I'd had my, I was on my own, I was sort of single. I'd, I was starting to see my now husband and I'd had a mortgage. But in terms of the mortgage, it was only, my only overhead and having children. So I thought, if I'm going to do this, this and really go for this idea that people have planted in my head. This is now's the time to do it. So out, just out of nowhere, I've said to them, well, in that case then, if you want me to go straight away, I will, but I'm taking the clients that I've bought on board and the ones I've got from Derby and they're gonna be mine. I'm gonna start by myself. Now that's fine. And I never heard or saw from them ever again from that moment onwards. Wow. That was me. And I felt bad because I'd worked so hard for them and what would, would have been the future us as a, as a group. Um, so I thought, crack it, they just literally tossed me to the, to the curb. But I thought, right, no, that's fine. It's an opportunity now to, if I'm going to do it, do it and, and prove those people right who had faith in me and were saying, you need to do it by yourself. So that, and away I went. I was just, at the time I was letting from someone and I said, um, would you mind if I just take down one sign and put another one up and explain the situation. They were really, really generous with me and let me off for a couple of months rent just to keep me going, but I didn't need it. I managed to pay them back straight away. So yeah, I hit the ground running with a handful of clients and a group from there, but it was, um, yeah, it was a shock. Yeah, <laughs> it was okay. a shock. Wow, that's amazing. But there's a, there's a real strong correlation there with Mark from um, Avid Media, who was the last guest on the podcast, with regards to it seems to be a very good sign before you start your own business. If you have lots of people, friends, family, yes. associates telling you that you're very good at what you do, you need to start on your own, then that, yes. that's a good starting point. Yeah. But also I'm curious as to when you first had that conversation with the original business owners about handing in your notice, what was the sort of time period between you making that decision and actually having that conversation? And, and how did you feel before having the conversation? Um. I worked myself up into a real frenzy. Mm. I was, um, it was always on my mind for, you know, maybe two or three months. Do I do it? Shall I do it? I was umming and ahhing for ages. And the intention wasn't actually to start my own business. The intention was just to get another job because I was so low about the state of our relationship with the co-directors. And it was really affecting me. And I thought, first things first is to get my mojo back make myself happy at work again and then I can then I can think about starting my own business but I was always putting hurdles in the way finding excuses not to start my own company and at that point something just clicked in my head I can remember vividly how I felt and I just thought bugger it I'm gonna do it what what's stopping me apart from myself so that's what that's the that's the little trigger point 
and you never look back. <laughs> and this is always a dangerous question to ask, but how old were you when you had that conversation? 29. Wow. Okay. Amazing. So day one, essential print, <laughs> Yvonne's her own business owner. Can you remember how that felt? <laughs> um, yeah, it was, um, it was surreal. And I just kept having to pinch myself. Is this actually happening? Did I actually have that conversation? But because I agreed to take on the the current order book, I had orders to fulfill, not very many, but still something to to be getting on with. So I remember the very first order that came in. And once the news got out that I'd actually taken that leap of faith, the number of messages and support was overwhelming. It was really emotional to think crikey you know I do have that backup and I think looking back at my first few orders which I have done recently I think they've they just ordered from me just to support me and for that I'll be internally grateful it was just like really really touching wow amazing yeah okay and so from that point then for the next 12 months (laughs) based on how you thought it would go for your first 12 months as a business owner master of your own destiny (laughs) what was the reality like It was bonkers, absolutely bonkers, because I was doing everything myself, right from making my own cups of tea, to finding the sales, to making sure everything was invoiced, making sure everything was paid, everything was delivered. And at that time, because I didn't have enough orders for a courier company to collect from me, I would have to then deliver all the jobs that had to be dispatched that were further afield from Derby down to the local depot every night by five o'clock. So I had a deadline to meet every day to make sure the orders went out on time and any orders that were local in the city centre on Pride Park and surrounding areas, I would deliver them myself. Mm. So I was delivering, which takes time, taking orders, doing quotations, doing absolutely everything. So many different hats during the day. It was exhausting, but I did thrive on it. It was a real buzz about it. And because it was just me, by me, for me, I felt... That was like quite a lot of freedom. Even though I was working all hours God sends till the early hours of the morning, getting up early, doing it all again. Looking back, it was it did feel like an adventure. It did feel exciting at the time. Okay. And so I can imagine that first twelve months, as you said, you you've got so much going on, you're doing everything yourself. It must have been an incredibly steep learning curve. Can you remember a particular misconception about that first 12 months that you had about being a business owner or what was your your biggest lesson that you learned, if you can remember, going back those years? I remember in the first 12 months having a real issue with having time off. I felt incredibly guilty. Um, And that really was a surprise and it really affected me. And after about eight months, um, I thought I need some help with this. So I looked at a local... um, not like a life coach, but it was more of a sort of counsellor that I went to go and see to explain how I was feeling and put some techniques in place. So when I could feel those emotions bubbling up again, I could recognise it and do something about it because it was hindering. It was having an effect on uh, my relationship. It was having an effect on my friends. It was having an effect on myself because I was just exhausted all the time. I needed time off, but I just felt like there was always something to do. And there is, but I now know when um, I need to break. I need to have that time off and and get away for a bit. Yeah, to refresh. Yeah. And uh, get back into it. And so what were some of those techniques? Because I think that's something from conversations that a lot of people struggle with, particularly when they're starting out, is that you feel you have to be there Mm. 24-7. And if you do take a day off, the whole world's going to collapse. What were some of the techniques that you used to address that? Well, towards the end of the first 12 months, it was obvious even to me that I'm going to need some help and the prospect of taking on my first member of staff was equally as nerve-wracking. I never thought I'd be taking on staff. I didn't want the responsibility of staff but there was no choice. If I wanted to continue pleasing my customers and coping with the amount of inquiries coming into me then I needed to take on some help. So that was one thing. It was it was starting a not-to-do list. So looking at what I was doing during the day what things could I give to someone else that I'd feel comfortable delegating? And that then formed the job description of the first member of staff. Okay. Um, it also was a bit of a wake-up call as to things that I really didn't need to do as urgently as I was treating them, which, again, gave me some space to then take some time off. Things that I wanted to do, but they weren't necessarily urgent. 
Okay. And so that not to do list, is that a practice that you've continued? Would Absolutely. You recommend? Okay. Absolutely. Wow. When I'm feeling overwhelmed or if my task list is getting too much, I've got to remind myself, I've got staff now that I'm paying good money to, to help me. So delegate. Yeah. Um, so again, the not to do list comes out. And if I ask my colleagues sometimes when we get really busy, can you start a not to do list? And let's see if that warrants a new job and create a new job within the business. And then we all discuss it and agree. But yeah, it's a really interesting exercise for anyone to do. Are you actually doing the stuff that's worthy of your time? Mm. Can this be outsourced? Can, it, can you give this to someone else to do? Yeah, some great questions to ask on a regular basis. Absolutely, as well, yeah. Just to keep yourself in check. Brilliant. Okay, so if you could go back to day one, is there anything that you would have done differently knowing what you know now? Um, I'd say don't sweat the small stuff. Okay. Like I said, there was doing, I was probably doing things that I didn't necessarily absolutely need to do and keeping myself busy because I thought that was what you had to do when you're a business owner, keep yourself busy all the time and ask for help and accept it when it's offered to you. People aren't trying to, you know, diddle you. When there was a, a lady who said, look, I can come in, I don't mind, just, you know, we can go out for a meal, pay me back in, going out for a meal together. I'm like, no, it's okay, it's, I'm fine, it's not a problem, I, c I can cope with all this. And at the time I think, why didn't I take them up on that offer? What's the worst that could have happened? You know, so yeah, it was it was accepting help when it's offered to you um, and not being afraid to outsource things, even if you have to pay someone a bit of money, because if someone else is doing that work on your behalf, be it the bookkeeping or mundane things like that, you can then be getting on with finding more work, which brings in even more money than what you're paying someone else. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's being honest with yourself. Do I actually need to do this? And don't sweat the small stuff. Okay. Some great tips there. Hmm? Um, so you started off as the sole business owner. Yes. You still are the sole business owner. What are the, some of the challenges that you face of, as being the face of this business, the sole owner? It was probably about a year ago when I actually looked at who I network with, who my business buddies are, and it dawned on me that very, very few are running their businesses by themselves. They either have a partner, be it a husband or wife, on the books as well, who doesn't, who's not so much the face of the business, but they're still there helping out and making decisions. Um, or they've got shareholders that they can soundboard off, or they've got um, co-directors. And then I thought, oh, blimey, it's little old me. I'm all on my own. And there are times when... You know, I will see hundreds of people in a week through meetings, networking, clients, deliveries, staff. And on a Friday night, I can still feel really, really lonely because the book stops with me. And I've got staff to, that I'm responsible for and their mortgages to think about. And business is going really well, but it could stop tomorrow. We could have no orders in tomorrow. And then what? It's, have I done enough? You know, the very, very slightest of dips on our stats and our dashboard, which I keep a very close eye on, I start to question, have I done enough? Should I have done more on social media? Should I have done more flyering? Should I have done more networking? So, yeah, the pressure of running your own business and having staff and looking after yourself is immense. It's really overwhelming. And so when those thoughts do start to pop into your head, are there some techniques or is there anything that you do in particular to squash them? I remind myself that the only person putting pressure on me is me and just to cut myself some slack and to remind myself of what I've achieved and the successes that I've had and the support that I've got around me, be it with my husband, Jim, my business buddies, those that I network with. There is help out there and I don't have to do it all myself. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just the pressure. It's making sure that I know that it's just me and, and it's fine. It'll be fine because the last eight years I've done it. Mm. I've got a track record now. There's no guarantee that we'll be around for the next eight years. I hope so, but we just don't look around the corner. So, you know, so I think you need to take stock 
regularly as to where you are with your business, what you've actually achieved, rather than just all the problems that you may have. Yeah. What's the good stuff that you've got on your table as well? Yeah, most definitely. Mm. It's something that we rarely do, is it? We're always looking at what's bad. So you've been a very successful business owner. You've achieved some incredible things outside of business that I'm sure we'll get onto later. What are the, some of the attributes that you have that you feel have contributed towards that? Um, I'm very resourceful. The other day I was trying to um, organise an event for one of the um, local organisations that I volunteer for and the immediate reaction to other people was, oh, that's going to cost a lot of money. And I'm like, no, it won't, because I know so-and-so at that venue and they'll do it because the, the profile will be raised. And I've got resourcefulness in terms of, I'm, I'm look, luckily to have, I'm very lucky to have the ability to design things myself. I'm a graphic designer by trade. I've been a designer for 20 years. So if I've got an idea, I can do it straight away. I don't have to rely on, on a third party to fit me in there, design, schedule, and then I've got to proof it. I know exactly what I want and I do it straight away, which means that if something happens in the news or in the weather, I can react to something on social media or get a flyer out there really quickly. So I'm resourceful in that way. I'm annoyingly efficient I hate inefficiencies. I'm the sort of person that will be in a restaurant and I'll I'll look at you know the kitchen and the way the staff have been served and and, and what the the sort of desire lines are in a restaurant and I'll think well that should be better. They need to put the knives and forks there because that'll be quicker because every time they go past it they can just pick them up. And I'm always looking to improve on processes and efficiencies everywhere whether it be managing my house managing you know the business everywhere so um that's that's put me in good stead really that's always been really useful and are those some of the attributes that you look for when you're looking to bring on board new team members as well is that important to you i think you can have too much of a good thing i think it's important to have a mixture of personalities in the office i think if we were all really efficient and really creative that would be a very bizarre working environment but yeah um one of the attributes i think has put me in made me made my business so successful is our generosity from absolutely day one i've always put some money aside that is used to help charities with discounted or free printing or to sponsor something or to donate to a certain cause or fundraising effort I'm not a greedy person. I'm not in this to get mega rich, and that might sound bizarre to some people, but that's not what floats my boat. It's been able to look after myself and be comfortable financially to then offer and create new jobs for other people and make sure they're sorted, and also to help the community. I want to be able to know, I want my clients to know that when they purchase from us, they're not helping, not only investing in a local small business, but they're helping to create jobs and they're also helping local charities as well because we do as much as we can for local charities whether it be advice referrals donations discounted printing wherever we can we help them and what's the driving force behind having that passion to help other people do you think has that always been something that's been important to you yeah i'm not too sure where it comes from but it's always been a real passion of mine, whether it be, I get a real thrill in introducing someone to someone else and I see them do business with each other and even form their own friendships. I think, crikey, I've done that. That's a huge impact. I just think, well, you know, our, our small business is doing all this amazing work, which proves that even though you might be small, you can make a mighty impact. Yeah. Most definitely. Well, you've been involved in lots. There's yeah. a small business UK, which I'm sure we'll get into uh, shortly on. So going back to the, the print design and the creative industry, I would imagine like most industries, it's a fairly competitive one. Oh, absolutely. How do you separate yourselves from the competition? Well, you've got the competition not only locally with manufacturers, but also online. Um, and that's a real tough one is, is trying to differentiate ourselves with the local manufacturers and also p pitch ourselves to add value to online suppliers now online suppliers have got their place in the market they're good for most things but if you if you have no clue about what you're buying and you need your hand holding and you want to go face to face with someone that's where we fit in we provide that step-by-step -step service and we help people along the way and 
if someone comes to us with a certain print spec or design idea and if we believe that it can be done better or you can get more for your money doing it a certain way then we'll always mention it if the client decides not to do it and to do it their way that's fine but as long as we've advised them that do you know that this material you know is better and it's also cheaper oh no i didn't that's great thanks very much or did you know that if you added an extra flyer in with your other orders we can do a package deal and it'd be more economical oh no, i didn't know that thank you very much whereas with online if you click the button if you click a wrong button and you, your job arrives on your desk it wasn't quite what you expected you've got two choices you either sort of go out there and go oh here's my fly but it's not not quite right and sort of half-heartedly hand it over to a prospect or you you put them in the stationary cupboard and that's where they gather dust so with us it's making sure that people are buying what they need and, and nothing more than what they need either they don't want to spend money on thousands of flyers only to find half of them in a the cupboard in a year after that are now out of date that's yeah. that's a real annoyance to me and I know from, from our side of things, whenever we've received a delivery from Essential Print, <laughs> it's more of an event than a delivery. <laughs> Everybody's rushing to the box to get out the jelly beans, send the thank you cards and the other materials we have, the day planner. You've talked about generosity before. Yeah, I think that's generosity. another way that we we do that is we always make sure there's gifts in there, yeah. there's presents. So you know we often get calls from clients just after i've delivered them like oh i've got your flyers and i'm like are they okay are you sure they're okay yeah the flyers are absolutely beautiful but where's my jelly beans you're like <laughs> seriously it's all about the jelly beans it's like oh man i'll do ne double next time so it's fine and was the purpose behind that always to separate yourselves from the competition it's just to make it fun mm. you know it's one thing for me is i've got to enjoy what i'm doing and you can't be happy 24 7 that is for sure but if i can add an element of fun into the experience not only for myself and my staff and the customers then that's what floats my boat i really do enjoy putting a smile on people's faces that's why i like delivering some of the local things myself because i get to see the people forge like build on relationships and i can spot things that they may need help with or contacts for and adding value as much as possible all the time um, and it's all about the experience so when we answer the phone it's happy you know it's because if I'm out there networking and I'm happy I don't want there to be you know a, it's out of sync with someone who answers the phone at the office and I'm not there and they're miserable that's not what I want I want people to forget about their worries just for a bit whilst they deal with the happy fun print angels okay and so how important do you think happiness is in running and being a part of a successful business? Like I said, I don't think you can be happy 24-7. It's not, it's not something that you, you are all the time. I don't think that's possible. Um, but there is a saying that, you know, it's not what you do for people. It's how you make them feel. Mm. I, I really resonate with that. You do remember how people make you feel. If someone's gone out of their way to help you, you know, oh, crikey, that was, that was really lovely. Um, one of our clients who publishes a book with us, um, she's on a second book now, and she invited me at the weekend to her 75th birthday. And I thought it'd be a really big affair, big party. There's only 20 people around the table. And I thought, I felt so privileged to be there. And she made me feel really special. And that's her customer. You know, people are, she's paying me to do a work for and she's inviting me out to a meal so I must have felt made her feel special along the way so that, that was really really nice that's really good and again making people smile as much as possible whether it be through having the space hoppers out in the office and getting them on our you know polar we've got a board in the office that when you come to the essential print services we encourage people to get on the space hoppers take a polaroid and then you put you put on our mugs rogues gallery you know, it's a really good, okay. it's a really good fun way. And lots of people say, I can't remember the last time I was on a space hopper. And I was like, good, because now you do. <laughs> okay. And that was going to be my next question with regards to happiness and fun. How do you instill that at Essential Print? Because when you look at the materials that you produce for your own business, that's certainly the impression. Oh, good. That you, that yeah, you give across. Yeah, it's all about it colourful. It's vibrancy. It's, you know, friendly, approachable. Um, so as long as we're getting that across, that's a good thing. And 
it's it's amazing how big a profile the company's got for a small business compared to um, even national print companies. We've got more reviews on Google, more positive reviews on Google than some of the national printing online companies, which is amazing. So we must be doing something right to to encourage, to make someone so impressed with our service and, and product that they feel that they have to put a review online. I mm -hmm. think that's amazing. When we get a testimonial through, it really does make my day, makes my week. Um, we instill fun from the office. So, you know, things like we have afternoon teas regularly. We, when we go out on a social, the company pays for everything. You know, don't, people don't want for anything. The space hoppers are in the office at all time. And the other day when a client came in, it was their birthday. It just, just so happened it was their birthday. So we got some chocolates out. We had some tea, got some music on. We had Stevie Wonders, you know, happy birthday to you playing very loud in the office. We have a music license, by the way, just for the record. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, the, that's one of the, my first investments was a music license because I do love my music. Okay. And we were dancing around the office with the customer. Not very often you get that. No. Experience. In any type of business. No. <laughs> okay. I'm sure she'll remember that for a long time. I hope so. <laughs> okay, so we've talked about some of the good times and the happy times. Now to flip that on its head. Can uh, you remember some of the times when things weren't going the way you'd hoped and how you dealt with that to put yourself back on a in a positive frame of mind? Well, I'm a lover of learning. I want I'm like a sponge, I want to know everything. So I've always I'm always reading books, mainly around business. Even when I'm on holiday, I've got a book, business book in one hand on the sun lounge and a cocktail in the other. I'm always learning, making notes, going to workshops. And by going to those things and taking yourself out of the business for a while, that really helps uh, refocus and put things in perspective. And when things are going not so well, I mean, to be honest, we're, we're so lucky. You know, I've got a great team behind me and things go OK to great most of the time yeah. and if things don't go too well we've got I've got a team that whatever is thrown at us we do, can we can deal with it and we don't leave people in the lurch even if a job goes wrong on a rare occasion we can't meet a deadline we will sort that client out with something and that's where our resourcefulness comes in look customer this has happened it's beyond our control it happens sometimes but we can't fulfill this but what we can do for you is this and we will go above and beyond to do that for you, even if it costs us more money, more time, even if it means me driving to the NEC one night to make sure that job is there with that customer, I will do it. Um, so in terms of bad times in the office, they're, they're few and far between and long may that continue. I think the only bad times is, is me personally and taking on that pressure and feeling overwhelmed. It's the, it's the feeling of overwhelmed when, you know, that's what I struggle with a lot and doubts you know I've had I think there was you know doubts from day one about am I actually up to this can I do this I feel like a I feel like a fraud most day you know the imposter syndrome I can really relate to that is someone going to find me out there's often times when I'm around the table with some really important people who I deem to be you know super duper important in the local area and I think how the hell have I muscled my way into this meeting. I don't feel worthy enough of being there. Then I remind myself, remind myself of things that I've achieved and think, actually, no, I, I, do, I do deserve to be around this table. So that's something that I'm, I will constantly work on all the time. You know, do I feel worthy of being here? Yes, I am worthy of being here. I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed today. Right, what do I need to do about it? What have I got on? What have I chosen to take on that I shouldn't be doing? What, why am I doing it? And just asking myself those, I'm coaching myself through those things as well. But that only comes from experience. Mm. I mean, in the early days, like I said, I had to have, you know, the coaching from someone to talk through how I was feeling because it was just stifling me, I'm stifling my productivity and my energy. And so, for people that are maybe in that same frame of mind now that are feeling overwhelmed, you went out there to yeah. to seek help from the the counsellor slash yeah. coach that you mentioned. Did that help you think things through? Did it help you overcome those feelings? And would you recommend anybody else doing the same thing? Absolutely. One of the things I've done recently is, well, past three years actually, is journaling. So I was getting to the end of the business year and thinking, you know, I've not really done that much. I've not really achieved much. And I do like to feel the sense of achievement. And I, and I look back at the journals and I think, bloody hell, I've done loads. 
I wonder I'm knackered and feeling overwhelmed. I've done loads, I've achieved loads, I've been to lots of places. So yeah, it's, it's making sure, like I said earlier, is recording what you've done, what you've achieved. And, and recently, I think we'll touch on it later on, is, is the, um, the awards that I've recently entered. And that forced me to, again, evaluate what I've done and how far we've come. Um, and just to note that down. So from whenever I send out a press release or I've done or something good has happened, I always make a note of the result from that. You know, where did it go? Um, what publications was it in? What sort of response did I get? And how I felt about it. That's also really important. So when I, when I go through the same feelings and experiences again, I can look back. Now I've been through this before. What did my past self think about this? Because, oh, right, that, that's how I dealt with it at the time. I can do, use the same technique to deal with it again. So you become your own Yes, coach. almost, yeah. And how do you go about journaling? Do you just have a blank A4 lines jotter? Do you have a, a specific? I know there's lots of different journals available I online. am a huge fan of stationery. I love pens, notebooks, and I am renowned of having plenty of notebooks at home that I don't even dare write in because they're just too beautiful. <laughs> so whenever I go out to buy a new journal, it is an event for me. It's a real treat. Um, so I, I find a beautiful and I've spent a lot of money on it. It's, it's really special, really important to me. So I find a beautiful notebook with beautiful paper in it, of course, because I'm a printer, mm -hmm. it has to have special paper in. And it's either a diary form or just a, a plain notebook. And I will write down not, not every day, because I think that's too much, but whenever I'm in the right frame of mind to positive review what I've done, I will sit down and make it an event and make it a nice occasion. And I will write down how I'm feeling, what I've done, look back at my diary on my phone, note down all the things that I've done, date things, you know, how I was feeling down that day, why. Uh, yeah, and just record those thoughts and feelings. So you document the the highs and the lows. Absolutely, like you yeah. Say, so when you go through it again in the future, yeah. you can look. And back is there and a see pattern? You, you know, yeah. is there a pattern? Is there a big event coming up that I'm nervous and anxious about that's making me feel down about things and recognizing that, and the next time thinking, but that's that's fine because I now I know why I'm feeling like this, and now I, know, I can overcome it. Mm. Okay, and so when you are journaling, is there a specific time of day or location that you like to go to? to do you do it in the morning? Do you do it in the evening after work? Do you do it at the weekends? When it's you mainly, down? if I do it, it's mainly on a Sunday mm -hmm. when I'm in the house by myself, no distractions, I'm feeling relaxed, I'm feeling clear-headed, and I can be honest with myself. Because there's no point writing things down to look back on if you're just trying to smooth over the bad things i've got to be make sure that right today i'm feeling brave i can i can record this now and, and write it down i did give journaling a go myself but i think where i've tripped up is as you say i was doing it every day and it just became more of a, a task chore yeah than something i was looking forward yeah to, an so. enjoyment yeah okay so we've talked about Sunday, that's the time you like to get down to do some journaling. <laughs> what are the other things that you like to do to, to wind down when you actually get some relaxing time? It's Sunday afternoon, your work's tied up for the previous week. What do you do? Read. Okay. It's reading, it's learning. Yeah. And my husband is also in the corporate life, so we will often either discuss business over dinner or we'll watch TED Talk or watch some inspirational video online and you do that together do it together wow. um and he's got some podcasts that he listens to that i'm not particularly a fan of and i've got my own too but it's good that we've in a similar sort of industry because when we can talk about and discuss ideas and and what would be good for that particular situation if we've got a problem but yeah in terms of relaxing you, can, you can't switch off you know you it's on you to make sure the plates are always spinning in the right direction. So even when I find that when I go on holiday, it probably takes me, it doesn't take me too long to, to wind down, but as soon as that brain space becomes available, all these ideas start flooding in. And I think, oh, I've got to, got to make a note of that. So I get my notebook out. And then before I know it, I've spent two hours writing down ideas of new flyers, new designs, new messages new connections, new events that I could do. And I just think I should be, you know, switching off now, but I just can't. And even when I go to a restaurant or I'm in town shopping, if a shop ass a sales assistant really impresses me, I'm one of those people that will give them my business card. Look, you really impressed me because 
annoyingly, to the annoyance of my husband and my staff, I am very difficult to impress. Um, I hate being disappointed and I'm very difficult to impress. It's not a good combination. So if someone does impress me and I hand them my business card, yeah. then that's a good thing. Take it as a compliment. <laughs> okay, and the reasoning behind giving you the business, giving them your business card, is that for future, future job prospects? Yeah, so future print angel. Okay, yeah. you could become a print angel too. Abs absolutely, yeah. Okay, the prestigious <laughs> title there. Okay. So you talked about being a learner. You like yeah. reading. Is there a business book in particular that you would recommend the, the most, one that sticks out in your head that you've taken the best lessons from? There's one by Daniel Priestley called Oversubscribed. Um, that was an easy book for me to read because I could resonate with a lot of things he was saying. So that was just a bit of an affirmation to me that I'm, yeah, I'm doing the right things. And there were some really good tips in there. Um, another one was actually one that you gave me for Christmas one year, Ben, that was The Miracle Morning. Okay. Inspirational guy himself actually is, is really good to follow on Twitter and he's done some really good talks online. It, in, the, in the book it suggests that you get to put the crack of dawn and do all these things before the day even starts. Now I've not done that. I, c I just can't do it. Um, I've but, got a confession. I've tried and I yeah, can't do it either. It's, <laughs> hats off to anyone who can do that. But um, some of the you know tips in there were really good. And there's a bit at the back where it advises you it suggests that you write an email to your close, not close friends, just 30 odd people that you know to get some feedback on yourself personally. And I thought, I'll do this. And ugh, I can't tell you, it's absolute game changer, the feedback that I got. Because I thought I was giving out a certain message to people. Mm. But what I, people were actually receiving from me was in some cases really different. Um, and some of the feedback that I got, I deliberately sent it to close friends and family, business buddies that I've known for a long time, but also people that I've only just met, but I would value their opinion. And that was interesting to see because it was all the business people that replied and only one friend replied. I thought that was quite interesting in itself. Mm. And so what was some of the feedback that you thought you would get what was what do you think people's perception of you was well i was driven and that was a piece of feedback that I was that I was getting and i thought i was approachable but some people said how scary i am okay and how they felt when they first met me that i came across really scary really assertive but that's not that's not me i mean for instance today i woke up and i knew i had a lot to do today but I was buzzing I had a great weekend I'm like right I'm on it I'm going to get shit done today I was absolutely loving life like skipped into the office and um, got my head down and just plowed through a load of tasks I was super efficient I was in the zone absolutely one of the today was one of these days where I absolutely loved what I was doing then my colleague said to me if I can have a word I was like oh crap what why what's up are you okay <laughs> yeah why you don't look very happy now, what are you talking about? I'm absolutely buzzing. So on, on the inside, I'm thinking that I'm giving off this, you know, I'm loving life, I'm loving what I'm doing. But on the outside, I must have been giving off a completely different message because I thought, my colleagues are a bit quiet in the office today. I hope they're okay. But I'm, I'm busy, so I'm going to crack on with what I'm doing. I'm sure they're okay. And lo and behold, they thought I was the one with the problem. But I was loving it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting to, to think why I, I know that i'm happy today and i'm feeling inspiring and creative now whatever's thrown at me today i can you know smash it out the ballpark but to my colleagues i was really unhappy and miserable yeah so it's really it's really useful to do that exercise and i would proceed with caution because mm -hmm. i'm one of those brave people who can take feedback and criticism but not everyone can and a couple of the emails that I received were, made me very emotional okay. from close friends, from close business buddies. Are they still close business buddies? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, every single one of peop other people that replied are still in my life, have not gone sod you, get out of my life, yeah. ousted them. No, they're very much, if, and I think by doing the exercise, not only did they feel honored that I'd asked them, hmm. but we're actually closer now, hmm. which is lovely. So yeah, I'd recommend doing it. I'd recommend reading the book, Miracle Morning. 
but proceed with caution with that exercise. It definitely takes some courage to yeah. ask for feedback on yourself. Yeah. And so from the feedback that you got, are there any adjustments that you've made? Being approachable yeah. and being a bit more compassionate was where Happy Cafe came in. Okay. So Tell us a bit more about that. I looked online and I found this website called Action for Happiness. It's a worldwide charity. And it just so happens that they were running a course and that happiness course six week course in Micklover and it was it was free but you could contribute some money towards it and I enrolled myself I also enrolled my husband <laughs> I thought if I'm doing this you're doing this with me um and we got to meet people from all walks of life now in business I do meet lots of different people but they're of a similar ilk whereas with happy cafe I admittedly would see some of these people on the street and stereotype them and judge them. Yet with Happy Cafe, I've, I've made a, my personal development has, has been huge because I've sat down with these people that I would have judged before and we've actually got common ground and they're just like me. And I'm like, crikey, you know, that's huge for me. And I've had people say since ha going on the workshop and since starting Happy Cafe, that oh aren't you aren't you a lovely approachable person and oh god you're just so so compassionate and I'm like ah something has changed and it's not been in, intentional I'm not deliberately going to Happy Cafe and doing these things and being a different person but having those realizations has really helped soften the way I sort of see other people and I, I suppose that comes across doesn't it you know, when you when you potentially put someone in a certain category. As but, we all do. Yeah, as we all do. So yeah, that's that's been a revelation for me and that's made me, made me more compassionate and want to help people even more, Okay. which is the big thing. Okay. It's like, gosh, I wanted to help people before, but now there's so many more people that I want to help. So what is the Happy Cafe and how can people be a part of it? So um, from the Action for Happiness course, the organisers, the volunteers wanted to continue meeting the people on the course regularly just to see how people are getting on, um, check in with people, share experiences. And on the Action for Happiness website, they encourage people to start a happy cafe. Now, it's not a physical cafe that we run with tea and coffee. It's an event. Um, we hold it at the Quad, which is also a charity. So that's a win-win for me. A charity helping a charity is fantastic. Um, the Quad very kindly let us use one of their rooms completely free of charge to host an event each month, third Wednesday of every month where anyone can come along and listen to an inspiring talk and it can be anything from um, depression, it can be anxiety, it can be a talk about someone's struggle with addiction, alcoholism and how they've got over it and what they've done in their life that's positive and how they can help others. We've got a whole series of talks coming on. It's been so popular though that we've had to ticket it which means there's some people out there not getting to the talks that they want to get to. And there's obviously a need in Derby for a group of people where you can come along and feel included and it's a safe environment. And if you go up to a stranger on a table and start talking to them, they're not going to give you a funny look. You can come along to Happy Cafe, you can talk to friendly strangers or you can bring your friends along, that's fine. But we do encourage people to mingle and to chat and to talk to people you wouldn't necessarily talk to normally and they will surprise you and inspire you like they have done with me. Yeah, it sounds like an interesting experience. It's, it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Okay, so get yourself down to the happy cafe, <laughs> everybody. Um, so going back to the business side of things, you've got Essential Prim, you've got the happy cafe, yep. you're a Small Business UK champion, you've also been nominated for this year's Great British Entrepreneur Awards. Yeah. How do you fit all of it in? I'm super duper organised and I'm a, I'm a geek, I love my tech, so I do rely on my tech to keep me organised, keep me diary uh, efficient as possible. I'm not a fan of meetings, so if I attend one of your meetings then know that I do actually want to be there and I'm enjoying myself and I think it's going to be good because if I'm, if I'm at a meeting and I don't think it's a good use of anyone's time then that's the most I hate that feeling I hate that frustration it's like really we didn't need this meeting and we've wasted everyone's time here so yeah so keeping me unnecessary meetings at an absolute minimum being organized I don't have children 
Now, I admire anyone who's running a business and they've got kids, especially young kids. I look at them and think, how the hell do you do it? And I've got a great team behind me who keep the cogs turning when I'm not in the office. So when I'm out of the office at an event or helping someone or delivering, I can concentrate on what I'm doing. I have to worry about what's happening in the office. I've got a great team that I trust to get the job done to the right standards when I'm not there. And processes, having a process that is constantly changing. It's I'm looking at improving the process all the time. We use a piece of software online that automates some of it, but allows us to know where a job is at any one time. It's got apps, it can see where orders are when I'm out and about, as well as when I'm in the office. It means the piece of software that we use also means that if anyone is off ill or if on holiday, you know exactly where they left off and you can just pick it up. It's really, really easy. So that having the software there is really important. It allows me to go out mm. and do what I do. Okay. And give up so much of my time. Okay, some good insights there. <laughs> so you're a small business UK champion that's seen you being invited to Downing Street twice now. Yeah. I believe. What is the small business UK all about? And more importantly, why should other local businesses be looking to be a part of it? Well, Small Business Saturday UK came over to us in 2013 from the USA. Um, and it started by simply reading a tweet one Sunday afternoon. It was November. I remember being at the flat that I w lived in at the time and thinking, do I really want to get my laptop out after a really crazy week at work? I should be having some downtime. But I was too curious and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to submit my profile and see where it where it ends. So it was so at the time, all you had to do was send in a profile of your business and what made you different and uh, that was it. And I pressed send and I thought if, if I get chosen, which I don't think I will do, um, the most I'll get out of it is a few more followers online, um, maybe a couple of inquiries and that would be it. That's all I imagined it would be and it's been so much more than that ever since just from that single tweet and sending in an email. I've been I've been chosen as Small Business Saturday UK champion, which is basically representing your area and small businesses in that area and helping them shout about themselves and telling them how much of a fantastic job and what a huge contribution small businesses bring to the economy and what resources and help is out there. You know, I've spoke to a lot of retailers and they've all got challenges mainly sales especially the retail market with footfall the demise of the high street at the minute but saying to them you know there are things out there that you can do yourself for free and being resourceful about it and then help tenants showing them look this is what i do i can show you and you can help yourselves and with that every year small business saturday the guys at uh, london and the office in london there they the first Saturday of the month is a big celebration of small businesses and you can choose to offer a discount on the day or host an event and because I love hosting events and hosting parties as well I decided right we're, on that day we're going to host an event in Derby it's going to be one of the biggest events single business, biggest events in the UK and it's got bigger and bigger each year so this year it's at the Enterprise Centre in Derby hosted by Derby University and Derby Hub and we're going to have like a small business festival. We're going to have music, we're going to have workshops, we're going to have talks. We're going to have an exhibition of small businesses. And everything about the initiative is free. So people who want to attend, it's free. If you want to exhibit, it's free. Also on the back of that, I've created a group on Facebook called Derby Small Businesses Unite. And there's over 500 members on there now and counting. So I'd urge people to join that because if you're a part of that group, you will get the updates and notifications about the event. But also you can post about your own businesses to over 500 people. And it's, a, again, another free, quick way of getting your name out there and in front of potential suppliers and buyers. And all of the links to those social media profiles and websites will be included in the show notes at benjaminbrain.co.uk. So we've also mentioned then, along with being the Small Business UK champion, along with many other things, you've also been nominated for the Great British Entrepreneur Awards this year. How did that come about? I managed to get myself somehow on their mailing list last year and they invited people to submit their 
businesses just happen to have a day where I could put my tasks to one side or delegate them and think, right, this year, it's our eighth year in business, I'm going to go for it. And it would be a good opportunity to force myself to evaluate where we are and look at the figures and not just think of um, not just think about oh we're doing so much percentage sales growth per year but actually fine-tune that and, and, and find the evidence of that making sure that what I'm saying and thinking in terms of forecasting for my business and business planning is actually true you know making sure that what I'm saying is true and also just a bit of a pat on the back for myself even if I just write this copy and just think right this is what you've done and once I started writing and I love writing it just flowed and it took me like 10 hours not in one big stint but I must have spent a good five hours for the first stab at it and I just started writing things I was like crikey I'm, I'm doing this and then that connects to that and that activity that I'm doing over here with this charity is now connected to this and this is where that opportunities come from and that door was open because of that thing that I do and having to try and explain everything that I do for you know profit and also voluntarily was so difficult to, to cram it all in but I really enjoyed the process and I thought right I'm going to submit this and I had no no I did not think I was going to get shortlisted I just thought there's so many other businesses out there that are better than us that are definitely going to get shortlisted I did not expect to see my name on that shortlist at all so I came back from a meeting one day and I thought to myself all oh, those those awards are going to get announced soon. I'm sure it's about this time. I'll just have a look online and see where it's at. And it said they're going to be announced in 10 minutes on Twitter live. And I thought, oh, now I'd not told my colleagues in the office what I was up to. And I thought, right, I'm going to keep an eye on this. And they started rolling the different categories and the different regions. And it got to the, to the Midlands and it got to my category, Small Business Entrepreneur of the Year. And I saw the names being revealed. And then the last one was me. And I just flew myself back on the chair. And I was like, oh my gosh. And my colleagues thought, well, what's going on? I was like, do you know that day when I spent literally all day in the, in the meeting room and I had my head down, but you know, I was, I was on something on a project. Yeah, remember that? Well, it was an awards and I've been shortlisted. They're like, oh, congratulations. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is actually happening. So yeah, it was, a, it was a massive surprise. And from that, and using my background in PR, I did the typical Yvonne Gorman thing and I milked it, absolutely milked it. And I had, again, looking at my task list and what I had on at the time, I recognised that I didn't have the time or brain capacity to write my own press release. So I outsourced it to a customer and said, Holly, can you give lemme a hand here? And she turned it around really quickly for me and I sent it out and we've had a phenomenal response from people, from people, from competitors as well, saying congratulations, which I think is amazing. But again, I'm just going there to network. I just want to go there and show my face and show my support for other people. And I have no, I've, I've absolutely no way I'm gonna win it because I looked at the people who are shortlisted, I'm thinking, crikey. They're so much better than I am, but let's see. But I, oh yeah, it's going to be an interesting well, evening. Thank you. We'll be watching ourselves on Twitter for those announcements. <laughs> so one thing that's really clear from what we've talked about so far is that when an opportunity presents itself, you don't just play around at it. You really give it your full effort. How do you distinguish between the opportunities that are worth your time and the ones that aren't? Well, with every opportunity. I give if I choose to go for it I give it 110 yeah. percent you know I think that's pretty clear to everybody and if I'm asked to get involved with a charity I've been a trustee before I've been recently asked to be a sponsor of another charity it, they're not just getting you know discounted or free printing or exchange of services they're getting my address book they're getting my advice and they're getting my opinion on things as well but I always look for the win-win, like multiple wins in every opportunity. It can't just be one win. It's got to benefit me, the company, other people. Is there a synergy between what the organisation is doing and what we're doing? Can it link in with something else? Yes, yeah, so I'm always looking for 
win-win and I think our business buddy Owen from Co56 would vouch for me when I say when Yvonne does something there's multiple reasons why she's doing it okay. so and that helps me give it 110 percent because it's not just one one reason and so when you are presented with an opportunity that perhaps doesn't have so many wins do you have any issues with turning people down and saying no if it's it's the way they approach it we get lots of speculative emails in from various you know local football teams or charities asking for donations it's a mass email that they've sent out it's not personal and we've always had a charity of the year it's me and d charity and we've always been a massive supporter of them but as well as them we always look to help ad hoc things as well and there was one gentleman called Stephen, Stephen Webster, he runs FND Dimensions Charity, who out of the blue phoned me up and said, you know, I've seen you online, I've seen what you've achieved, you've done X, Y, and Z. And I thought, crack, this does his research. He's actually taken the time and an energy to, to research what we're doing. And he told me how we could work together. And he told me the synergy that we had and if we helped him, this is what he would do for us. And I thought, crikey, I can't say no to this guy. He's, he's really put this proposal on the table and I can see how it can work. He's done the work for me. So I think that's probably one tip that I'd give to anyone who works for a non-profit, works for a charity, or just needs some, some voluntary help is if you're going to approach someone, make it personal, pick up the phone, that will, that will set you apart from people who just send mass emails and do the work for them. Show people what they will get from it, either through corporate social responsibility or through personal synergy or personal passion. I think it helps that I'm passionate about most of the things that we're involved with. If it's something that, if I feel I can't give it 110% or the, the love for it and passion isn't there, then I say, look, it's not really for me but maybe contact this other person or I'll advise you next time maybe approach it this way. So I'll try and offer them some help and advice. Mm. But yeah, I have no hesitation in saying no to some of the things that come our way, but okay. it's got to be the right opportunities. Of all your years experience in business so far, what do you think is the biggest misconception of being your own business owner? That you can do what you like, there's freedom. Yes. If it really comes down to it, if I wanted to take the afternoon off, I could, but I don't let myself because I feel the responsibility and the tie to the office and to my colleagues in making sure that I'm there to help them and bring in more, enough sales that generates enough profit that covers the costs and their wages, etc., etc. So yeah, even though there should be more freedom in running your own business I think from knowing the people I do within my network most of us will say mm, it's not as not as free as you might think it it is and successful doesn't necessarily mean that you're rolling in cash some person's idea of success is someone else is completely different to someone else's idea someone might not be as materialistic as the next person so again it's it's not necessarily it, running your own business will make you rich that's not a given. And what would you say your definition of success is? Being happy. Okay. You know, it's just as simple as that. It's enjoying what you do. And if you enjoy what you do, it won't feel like work. And I think that is where I get the element of freedom from. Being, to, to know that when I get up in the morning, I actually want to do. I'm very privilege I've got a, a beautiful office it's light it's got windows I don't work in a, a factory that wouldn't work for my personality I c if I've got an idea I can I can do it straight away I've got don't have to ask anyone permission that's one benefit of working as a sole business owner is there's no one else to answer to that has it has its advantages and disadvantages but yeah I think when people say oh you run your own business you're a business and you can do what you like mm, no no, you can't. Okay, some good tips there. So for anybody out there that's thinking of living the dream and starting their own business, you've got to put the work in. Absolutely. And going back before you started the business, if you could visit 21-year-old Yvonne and you could only pass on one piece of advice, what would it be? Well, that's a, that's a tough one because that would mean me possibly thinking about regrets. And I don't, um, I don't really have regrets because even the bad stuff that happened to me 
in my life it's made me the person I am today I really firmly believe that but yeah I don't think everything's happened for a reason and it's made me who I am today and I think to want to give advice to a past self or you know change anything would would be wrong apart from when I look back at my journals they're really interesting to see how I was feeling at the time but yeah I think if anything it's it's about don't sweat the small stuff again and bringing it back to the now or to the future really (laughs) what does the future look like for yourself and essential print services gosh well I do have a business plan but it's changing all the time and I don't think you can plan too far ahead because opportunities may come up and it will throw you off course so it's, it's good to have an idea of where you want to be going I think it's been a huge achievement to be in business eight years because many people fail and like I said earlier on there's no guarantee that there'll be a future but I can at the minute where when I'm looking from the outside in on essential print services it's it's good it's solid we we don't have any debts we've never used our overdraft and I think we want to buy we buy because we've got the cash there so it's a bit of an old school mentality and I think that's probably stalled our growth we've not grown as quickly as other people who would take the risk on taking on over you know loans and, and finance but I think it's made us more stable more solid business to know that we've got that cash there and we don't have any any overheads in terms of any debts and that's also a, a worry that I don't have you know mm. having t- I don't have the worry of the bank manager or the people knocking the door saying that we owe us money that's not that's not the way we do business but we have grown steadily year on year and the plan is to have more of the same and the longer I'm in business the more difficult it is to maintain that to to grow steadily why do you think that is majority of our customers are derby and derbyshire we do have people all over the country but majority are local um and there's more there's more to be had and we've made a name for ourselves locally that's for sure so in terms of growth we are I, i do need to proactively look further afield so it's almost like starting from scratch, which in one way is exciting, another way really scary. But it's also maintaining the current client base and making sure that they're happy. It's not all about always finding new customers. It's making sure that what the ones you've got are happy and they are completely aware of all the services and products that you do and how you can help them. So yeah, it's, it's difficult. And also with our line of work and what we do, there are no contracts, no printing contracts. So I do not know when the next job is going to come in, which petrifies me. And it's also quite exciting. So when it does, when a job does come into the inbox or someone phones up to say, can I have another set of business cards? It's like, oh, we've got an order. It's just as exciting as it was when I first started. I get, I think, oh my gosh, someone actually wants to buy from me. It's so exciting. You still get the same buzz Yeah, I still get the same buzz. Then. Yeah, okay. it's amazing. amazing. And my final question, if anybody else wants to find out about Yvonne or more about the services that you offer at Essential Print, what are some of the ways that we can connect with you online? Gosh, where can't you find us at the minute? <laughs> so we're everywhere. We've got a chat facility, so that's open and online during office hours, Monday to Friday. And we don't use chat bots. If when you chat with us online, there is a real life print angel on the other end. And that's at your website? Yeah, www.essentialprintservices.co.uk. And on social media, we're on the four main platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I'd also ask people listening to maybe follow our LinkedIn business page because I could do with a few more followers that would be amazing thank you very much and again if you want to join the Small Business Saturday um, group on Facebook which is the which is Derby's Small Businesses Unite if you search for that you'll find it if you want to join that to keep up to date with local activities and local events I don't just post about Small Business Saturday on there I post about all the different things that's going on that I know about so if you are running an event and it's business related send it in to me message me and I can post it on there to let other people know okay amazing so plenty of ways to follow absolutely yeah there and as i've said before all of the links will be on the show notes at the blog on uh, benjaminbrain.co.uk so make sure you check that out well that brings the interview to an end thank you very much for your time Yvonne there's been some amazing insights and wisdom and, and pearls dropped in there so i hope the audience has enjoyed it i certainly have again i'd just like to thank you for the time and uh, thank, thank you. you for being a guest on the truth about business thank you 
another fantastic business interview with another brilliant real life business champion and I'd just like to take this time again to thank Yvonne for spending the time with me for being so open so honest and sharing some great business wisdom and some amazing experiences that hopefully we can all learn something from so I hope you enjoyed listening to the show as much as I did recording it with Yvonne and if you did and you don't want to miss out on the next episode make sure you subscribe via whichever podcast app you're listening to right now of course any five star reviews are greatly appreciated alternatively you can head over to benjaminbrain.co.uk and subscribe there that way i can send you a notification as soon as the latest episode is released of course all the show notes for avon's interview are also hosted there so any resources mentioned all the links to avon and the businesses and organizations that she's involved with are also posted there so if you want to get in touch that web address again is www.benjaminbrain.co.uk and whilst you're here i'd also love to hear your feedback so my aim is to make this podcast as useful as possible because I want to share the experience of business owners who have been there done that and have the scars to prove it so that you guys any entrepreneurs business owners themselves or would-be business owners can fast track your own success from learning from the highs the lows the challenges and the lessons shared by my guests so if there's any questions I'm not asking that you'd like to know the answers to if you have any feedback I can use to improve the podcast or if there's any guests you'd like to hear from for future episodes please let me know i'd love to hear your comments and feedback all you need to do is send me an email to hello at benjaminbrain.co.uk and i'll always reply myself as soon as i possibly can so that email address again is hello at benjaminbrain.co.uk so it's been a pleasure thank you for listening look forward to catching up with you on the next episode which will be coming soon until then i've been benjamin brain This is the truth about business. Stay hungry, stay fearless, get out there and make it happen.